Hello everyone, welcome to Self-Hosted Kubernetes with BPF, episode two. In this episode, we'll be creating our platonic virtual machine. Just a reminder that this series is zero indexed, meaning that this is the third episode of a five episode series. What I'm trying to do in this series of um, videos, instead of giving you one giant um, multi-hour hour long video, I'm trying to break this series up into smaller um, digestible chunks. So let's get going. What's the agenda for today? What we're going to do today is we're going to create a, a VM using QEMU. Um, we're going to set up this VM in order to be used by our um, Ansible scripts so that we can create a, um, uh, a real concrete version of our um, of our Kubernetes cluster. So what we're doing in this video is to create the platonic version. Uh, and this, this, this um, virtual machine will be copied and then the copy will be used by our Kubernetes cluster. So to do that, we need to, after installing and setting up the virtual machines, we're gonna install some necessary scripts for networking and we're gonna disable the automatic updates of Ubuntu server 20.04. After that, we're going to transfer the QEMU-based QCOW2 image to an ext4 file. Um, that is because Firecracker needs ext4 in order to run. And then we're going to test that the, the Firecracker image works properly. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing that we want to do is go to ubuntu.com to grab uh, Ubuntu server 20.04. And to do that, we'll click on download. Then we'll get Ubuntu server. Then we'll scroll down here and use option two for manual server installation. And we'll download the server 20.04.2. Um, this will start automatically. Now I've actually already downloaded this, so I'm not going to download it again. I've downloaded it into my downloads area. And I am going to then transfer that to a place where I store all of my ISOs. So. Let me download, let me transfer that to my VM ISOs area. All right. So after that, we're going to create a QEMU image. And the, the way that you do that is QEMU image create uh, dash F QCAT2, and you give a name for what it's going to be called. So I'm going to call this Ubuntu serve um, dot QCAT2. And I'm going to give this eight gigabytes of, of hard drive space. I am then going to use my QEMU scripts. Um, and this script is called run. And you can find this script in my, um, my GitHub QEMU runner script, uh, my, uh, my uh, QEMU runner GitHub area. And this script is simply a, a wrapper around calling QEMU. Um, so the way in which you run this is you just type run, you give the name of the, um, the image that you just created, and you do a CD, which means CD-ROM, of that image that we just downloaded. So ISOs Ubuntu 20.04. And if I do a dash dash fake here, it'll show you what the actual QEMU call is. So you can see it's a little bit complex, and that's why I have this runner script, because it's it's easier to use this runner script, but you don't need to have it. So let me run this and we will pop up a window to install a virtual machine with um, Ubuntu 20.04 server. So I'm going to speed through this. I'll slow the section down for things where you have to pay attention to. Now, this is one of the areas that you have to pay attention to. We don't want to set up an LL, an LVM group for our, um, our hard drive here. So all you have to do, and I'm sorry that the font is so small, it's just the, uh, the nature of QEMU on, on my machine here. I'll see if I can zoom this in just a little bit. Um, yeah, sorry, I can't, I can't get it much better than that. But uh, what you need to do here is instead of, of um, setting up Setting this disk as an LVM group, we just take away the X from that and continue with the, uh, 
the done 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 nature of the installation process. All right, so our installation has completed here. And what we need to do now is just go and reboot now. And after the reboot, it'll ask us to make sure our CD-ROM is ejected. And of course, we didn't have actually ins inserted CD-ROM the normal way. So it's just going to reboot here. And after that, we can just close our QEMU window. So we close that. And then let's boot up the, uh, the QEMU image that we just created. And in this case, we're going to um, port forward from our local host port 2222 to the, um, the QEMU images port 22 for OpenSSH access. So let me run this again. All right. And I will enter the credentials that we installed during the... Um, the installation process and just check that I have uh, networking and I do. And one last thing is I'm just going to make sure that I have system control um, start, or enabled now SSH D. SSH. Let's let's uh, actually just try and SSH into localhost. It's probably already there. Yeah. Okay. So we can SSH into this virtual machine, and we shall do so now by SSH um, user at one nine or ten dot zero dot two dot. Actually, it's localhost ssh.port2222 localhost l user. And we need to clean out the uh, the known hosts because I do a lot of SSHing into localhost and different keys get, get placed in here. All right, let me try that again. Yes, and I am the user and I'm now in the virtual machine. So let's uh, first update this machine. So sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade. All right, and one last thing is we need to sudo snap refresh. Okay, now we need to put on some scripts in order to um, make using our Kubernetes cluster um, possible. What these scripts are gonna do is they're going to, instead of doing um, DHCP to get the IP address, it's going to manually assign um, an IP address based on the MAC address that, we're, that we give to the virtual machine during the running of the, uh, the virtual machine clustering. So those scripts are found in my Kuber Ansible GitHub repository, and they are the selfnet service and the VM self-net. So let's uh, grab those two scripts by going into them and clicking on raw, getting the uh, the IP address, and on the, the virtual machine here, uh, let's make sure that we have, actually, uh, Ubuntu comes with wget, so we can just wget those files. And then what we're going to do here is move vm-self.net.sh uh, self to slash root. And then we will move the self-net service to at set, uh, ect slash systemd uh, slash system. And then what we're going to do is disable the um, the DHCP that um, 
that Ubuntu sets up automatically, and it uses NetPlan to do that. So we're going to sudo vim etcd netplan uh, 00, 00 installer.config, and we're just going to turn this off. So we're going to turn DHCP to false. Okay, so let's, um, the last thing that we want to do here is sudo system control, enable the um, self net. Okay, and then we're going to turn off the, um, turn off the machine here. And now that it's off, the next step that we want to do is inside of the area where we call our run script, we want to set up um, the network namespace um, that we will be using to run our cluster. Um, and you can get the, uh, the, the method that I'm using here inside of my um, QEMU runner again. And this script is called NS. And I've demonstrated the use of this script in a previous video titled, um, titled uh, put a VM in a network container. So it is, uh, if you see the, the image, it's isolate your virtual machines. Um, so I demonstrate how to use this script in that video. Um, and I'll, I'll demonstrate it again here because it's pretty simple. So um, let's click on NS here, just so that we have it up. Now I've already got this installed on my machine. So I'm going to NS, sudo NS dash U, dash n test dash e my user and i'm going to start it with a bridge and it's going to use enps 8s as its um um physical um ip address or physical um physical network card um so i've demonstrated I've, I've talked about how this all works in that previous video so i'm going to run this up and now I am in the network namespace and I've got a, uh, a bridge up. So I'm going to start that machine up again. But instead of saying um, port forward, this time I'm just going to say use that bridge. All right, so the virtual machine is up and running. And let's make sure that it's got an IP address now. And it does not. So something has gone wrong here. Um, what has gone wrong? Um, we can take a look and we can do a sudo system control status um, self net to see what, what's gone wrong here. And it looks like it failed because there was a permission denied. So we forgot to do a step um, while we were setting up the VM self-net file. And that was, we forgot to, we forgot to, to allow execution of that script. So let's just do a chmod plus x of VM self-net. And let's reboot. Now, I'm sorry again for the, the, the badly sized uh, window here, but now we do have an IP address at 192.168.1.50. So we should be able to SSH into that. And we can. So great. Um, we've got um, nearly, we're nearly done here. What we need to do now, and this is just for, for nicety's sake, we don't actually have to do this next step here. We want to disable the automatic updates from Ubuntu 20.04 Server Edition. And this is because our Ansible scripts, before they install Kubernetes, they actually do the update process themselves. Um, and these uh, update scripts will fail if update is already running at the same time, because you can't run two um, apt commands at the same time on Ubuntu. So let's, there's a web page here that describes how to go about doing this. So let's follow along with those steps. So let me move my windows around so that we can see both the instructions and what we're doing. 
So what we want to do is go into this apt.conf 20 auto upgrades. So let's sudo vim at c apt apt.conf.d 20 auto upgrades. And we want to change these ones to zeros. So it should be that easy. So um, now we've got ourselves, um, after we shut this down, now we've got ourselves a nearly complete platonic version of our virtual machine. One last step that we need to do here is transfer this into a firecracker based file system so that firecracker can run this instead of using qemu and the way that you do that is again using one of my scripts um, the script is called mk firecracker so again this is a, a pretty easy script to use and what you do is you just supply the qemu image um, and then various parameters saying how you want the output to exist. Um, one thing that we need to know is the actual um, partition of the root file system on uh, the QEMU um, system that we were just running. Um, so that happens to be either two or three. I'm going to try out two first. And if the the, the make firecracker um, script fails, then we'll, we'll run it again with three. So let me um, now run a make firecracker and we're going to say that let's do it with help first so a make firecracker s of eight means that our ext4 image will be eight gigabytes in size the image that we're going to use is that ubuntu serve qcow2 that we just created and the partition is going to be partition two so we run this script as root and it should create us an ext4 based file system that we can run in firecracker and if everything goes went well you should see a list of what the ext4 based system should look like so this looks to be good because that looks like the uh the root fs of ubuntu so now we have this os.ext4 and we're going to sudo chone that to whatever your user is on your Linux machine here. So I like to, my username is mm, so I'm going to chone os.ext4 to my username. I am then going to move this, uh, to rename this to um, os.ext4 to Ubuntu serve 2004.ext4. All right, so now we've got this uh, Ubuntu server image and it should be runnable in, um, in Firecracker. So let's give that a try here. Let's um, make sure that we're still in the network namespace, the, uh, the, the network namespace that we use here. So the network namespace is in the different window here. So IPAA and We've got this tap zero. Um, we don't need to worry about that right now. And we've got a BR zero. So let's use um, my firecracker scripts, which are similar to my QEMU scripts. And they're, they're in the same repository, QEMU runner. And it's uh, this FC. And what it does is the a similar thing to the, the run script. It just makes um, using firecracker a little bit easier here. So I'm going to fire up the firecracker service by just doing an FC. And in this other window, which does not need to be in the same network namespace, I'm going to do an FC-C-R and the name of the, um, the ext4 image that we created. So that's going to be slash home slash mm slash code vms observe 2004. And then the kernel version which is going to be at slash home slash 
mm slash code slash Linux uh, VM. Um, and I'm going to say that this is in interactive mode. So that means that um, this should pop up with a user, a user prompt if everything goes well. So let's run this. And everything did not go well here. We don't have uh, an ETH zero. All right, it looks like I have a slight bug in my script right now, and we actually need to be inside of the network namespace, the same network namespace that we're running FC, um, the Firecracker server, um, to be able to issue the command properly. I, I hope to have this fixed in the future, but for right now, you need to enter into the network namespace that is being run for the server right now. And the way that we do that is we issue a sudo IP net NS exec, um, and then go into the, the, the virtual network, which is test NS, and we're going to run bash in that. And then we will make sure that we're running our normal user here. So we can see that we've got the, the bridge still and that we are in the test network. So let's just issue that FC again. And Firecracker is in interactive mode right now. We'll enter our user and see that we have an IP address and we do. So we can now SSH into that from a different, um, a different prompt here. So I am no longer in the same network namespace, but I should still be able to get into that machine. And it's actually 52 this time. And we're now in the machine. So um, we now have the platonic image completed so that we can run a virtual machine cluster using this image. Um, so that's uh, what that's all that we're going to be doing today. Um, I will see you in the next episode where we'll, we will be running the Kubernetes setup scripts on the virtual machine cluster. So see you then.